cases from outside and did we think so too and I think we had to agree with him and uh, I said well it's strange because we've just recorded a track called It's Nearly Africa um, which was incidentally something I wrote in 1975 but never finished off uh, but uh, he said could, uh, could he use a track and I said well why don't you use this track It's Nearly Africa which is the most blatant uh, stretching out and, and stealing of a musical form that we'd ever done, which was kind of African music or, or sort of African pop music. But um, it, it worked out well. We did the track, and then we used it on our own album, and uh, and he got to use it too in the Womad album, and uh, hopefully it's making some money, you know, for uh, for for people to... Uh, I heard some people uh, mention that perhaps that's a sort of parody on the uh, wholesale adoption of uh, African rhythms into uh, pop music these days, but I guess uh, that's not the case at all. Uh, I can understand it, but I know what you mean by, by a parody, but actually the song was, um, uh, as I say, I originally wrote the majority of the words in, in 75, and it was about how things were getting very, very mechanized. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we, if we got a little simpler? That's basically all it is. It's a kind of, please, let, let's simple out things. And, and, and life seems to be getting faster and faster. And we're forgetting the kind of good, natural things. Uh, it sounds like an old hippie philosophy, I know. But it, it, we seem to be forgetting the kind of good, straight, straight, natural things in life. And, uh, and worshipping the kind of false things in life and I was just I just wanted to say by it's nearly Africa that that I think that uh, primitive things have a lot of worth really that's that's what I was trying to say in the song but I later when we finished the song I did think god this is like a parody of, of all the kind of things that are happening because here it is all in one song looming out but I, I yes I can understand what you're saying but no it isn't strictly a parody but mm. um if people do take it that way, then fine. That's all part of the empty slate that I was saying. Hmm, hmm. Um, what about other uh, projects with other people? Uh, recently, I've seen your name on uh, Thomas Dolby's album and uh, Joan Arbitrating's album. Uh, how about other projects with uh, other artists? Uh, yes, I do enjoy playing with other people. Uh, it Because when you're on somebody else's record, it's almost like, here you are, the muzzle is off. You can bark and yowl and bite and do what you want without a... <laughs> without your own kind of, you can sort of strip your personality and, and to dance about, you know. So, um, well, I did the, um, I produced Tom Dolby's first single, which is a double A side called uh, Urges and Leipzig is Calling You. And uh, we did this single in an attempt to get him a record contract. And subsequently he did get a record contract. Although I don't know how much was my intervention and how much was the song. Um, and then as a kind of a return favor, he said, well, look, I'm doing an album. Uh, would you come and play on it? And uh, literally, I just went up and uh, my only contribution is, is the harmonica playing on Europa and the Pirate Twins. And um, the thing with the Joan Armour trading record was uh, Steve Lillywhite was, was doing this album, Walk Under Ladders, or as it subsequently became titled. And uh, he said to me, uh, look, I'm, you know, I, I like your guitar playing. Would you come and play guitar on this Joan Armour Trading record? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get on with Joan Armour Trading at all, and I was supposed to be playing the whole album, doing the whole album. But I just ended up doing two tracks because I really uh, didn't get on with Joan Armour Trading's personality. It was, it was far too dour and kind of... Um, uh, I almost got the fact that she resented resented anyone else being on the record because I believe that she'd, she'd like demoed all the music up herself and uh, and had other people in to, to kind of like play the parts better but I almost felt resentment uh, but I ended up playing on two tracks um, one called Eating the Bear which I play a sort of a skanking offbeat figure and a funny little almost like a, a, a reed pipe tune but it's actually on the guitar they buried it in the mix but it's a kind of an eastern thing underneath and uh, I played on a track that I damned if I can remember the name of it, but it's a very gentle acoustic thing, and I played all the acoustic guitar flourishes underneath. 
but as I say, I was supposed to do the whole lot, but I didn't get on too well with Joan. So uh, I said, look, um, I'm not getting on very well, so I'm going. Bye-bye. <laughs> Any other uh, projects we should be informed of over here that you've uh, taken part in? Uh, well, as I say, the film music, which, uh, which might... Uh, be of interest, although I must admit I, to some extent, built the music to this fellow's request. Um, it sounds like a um, very primitive Tamita because my keyboard technique is dreadful. And I was, um, it, it was my oral suggestions of the, or tonal suggestions mixed with uh, what the, uh, the film producer wanted. Uh, for specific scenes, so it's a kind of a compromise record, but that, I did that. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be released other than on the soundtrack of the film. I don't think it's coming out as a record. Um, nothing as yet, apart from the new album of the band, really. I think when the new album of the band's done, I'll have a bit of breathing time and uh, might try and stick my fingers in other people's pies, or if I'm invited. But... Um, nothing planned as of yet. I'd, I'd like to do some music on my own, but I'm afraid that uh, I almost feel uh, uh, trapped on this kind of commercial treadmill where um, uh, the records that I make are obviously going to be uh, reasonably big productions and they're going to come out and be reasonably expensive, you know, as records are. And uh, I do have these deep romantic notions about music being not free, but certainly not as expensive as it is now, and uh, about, like, producing records from home, but, uh, you know, I'm really contractually tied up for several years yet, so if there's something, if I do do anything like that on a small scale, then it won't be for a few years' time. What about the possibility of a non-soundtrack, non-musical uh, uh, Annie Partridge solo album? Uh, a straight... A, well, a straight compilation of, uh, uh, say, tunes, not unlike XTC might do. Um, well, really, I, I write with, not with the band in mind, but when I write, it's on headed band notepaper, if you see what I'm getting at. <laughs> I don't write things on my headed notepaper so that I can put them in one drawer and say, OK, well, I'll do that with songs in a couple of years' time. Uh, I just write, and, and it happens to be on, on, on the band's lines. Um, because I think I know the personalities and it's obviously their personalities have, in, have, have come into me and indelibly gone into me. But um, no, I, I don't write with uh, like anything else in mind. So if I were to do an album of songs, uh, it would probably be just the latest batch of songs that I had written that the band would have done. But I, I don't have anything of that in mind. I was going to do an album uh, with John Leckie who did Takeaway with me. Um, but I, I was going to do it this year, but things went so that, like, you know, I had, like, illness and, and was writing for the band in any case, so that didn't take place. So I'd still like to work with him. I have several ideas for, for records to do with him, but they'd be mostly instrumental records. What, why does the name John Lucky sound very familiar? What, what oh, he did, uh, he's done everything from, from engineering Pink Floyd records to, uh, oh, to he, doing... Bebop Deluxe? Bebop Deluxe, Simple Minds, a lot of electronic music or early kind of electronic attempts and things. But he's, he's done lots and lots of work in the past. I see, right, right, right. Um, do, do you think a solo album would sound a lot different from XTC? Yes, I think so. I think I would, to some extent, would feel as though I had the XTC mantle lifted from me uh, and wouldn't have to sound like an XTC record so that it would probably be more, as opposed to being, say, 50% my personality in an XTC song, it would probably be more like uh, 90 to, to, to 100%. You know. Any uh, concrete, specific differences you uh, would come to mind? Sorry, any? Any, like, uh, specific uh, differences that you, you think uh, would occur? Um, like between, say, uh, a song done on your own? Uh, yes, possibly there'd be more open-ended, um, uh, well, short of saying flatulently self-masturbatory, I'd say, I'd tend to say exploratory, but uh, they'd possibly more, be more open-ended. I, I, when I get into my XTC suit, I feel uh, that the, because of the, the responsibility of other people as well, 
Uh, it's the